with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker this morning. He's really someone that I try to emulate, someone who I'd like to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> our pastor, our leader, our hero, Reverend John Scott. Wow. Oh my goodness, I've never been called a hero. <laughs> Thank you, Vance. I was looking around to see who was going to speak. <laughs> my friends, welcome to another beautiful Sunday morning at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. Whether you are in the sanctuary with us on this sun-kissed morning or you are online, tuned in in consciousness to this Heroes Weekend celebration of the glory of God that manifests itself in and through all humankind, all life kind, all creation. You know, my friends, the words of that hymn, ours, O Lord, a mighty nation, stir my soul to the very core. For a small and relatively young nation, we have produced sons and daughters who have excelled in every sphere of human endeavor. And Jamaicans have impacted the world in ways that far exceed our size. Not true. Just take one of our seven national heroes, for example, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, born in St. Anne's Bay in 1887. In his short 52-year lifespan, Garvey became one of the world's most influential leaders. I loved Vance's reading uh, from the um, Daily Word on leadership this morning because Garvey exemplified leadership at its very highest in that 52-year lifespan, Garvey, his brilliant oratory, his grasp of philosophy, and his newspaper called The Negro World, founded in 1920, brought him millions of followers all over the world. In fact, it is, it is believed that his organization was and still is the largest international organization of all time. You know, friends, we can truly say that pun on our name with pride. And that pun is Jamekya. For those who don't speak Patois, that translates as Ja, Jehovah or God made here but it loses something in the translation, doesn't it? So let us all say together, Jamekya for true. Jamekya for true. Which means God made her in truth. Doesn't quite do it for me. Jamekya for true. So turn to someone near you, near you, either at home or in the sanctuary, and say, I'm me for tell you. I'm me for tell you. Again, which means you telling me, or I should tell you, this is my experience. But friends, this morning, I want us to celebrate heroes other than those that have been officially recognized as our national heroes. And I'm not talking about celebrating the people who have had significant impact on your life. Your, the mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers, the school teachers, um, those people who have touched your lives in significant ways. We have celebrated them too. This morning, I want you to celebrate the hero in your mirror. The next time you look into a mirror, smile, give yourself a thumbs up, and say, Ja mek me fi true. I'm me fi tell you, Jamek me. Because my friends, the truth is 
that you are God's hero. God created each one of you as his earthly representative. God wanted to experience more of life, more of beauty, more of its self-givingness to, to creation through you and as you. So you are, in a very real sense, God's hero. You know, so often when I think of that, I look in the mirror and I say to myself, I wonder as, if as God's hero, as God's ambassador to earth, if what I'm thinking and what I'm saying and who I'm being in the moment is a credit to that which created me in its image and likeness. And so I think the most heroic thing you could do is to remind yourself that God created you to be its own hero. And that no one, either before you or after you, will ever be able to do what you do, to be who you are, and to express God in your unique and beautiful and glorious way. So my friends, I just want you to think about that. I am God's hero. In author J.K. Rowling's book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the mirror of Erised, and that's desire spelt backwards, was a magical mirror which reflected to the person looking into it their deepest desires and wants. So if you were the kind of person who was happy and contented and had no particular burning need in your life, when you looked into the mirror of Erised, you would simply see yourself glowing and beautiful and as you are. But if, like Harry Potter, who was orphaned, you had a burning desire for something, when you gazed into the mirror of Erised, it would reflect back to you your, your dreams, your heart's deepest longing and desire. And Harry wanted, his, his deep yearning was to know, he was orphaned, so his deep yearning was to know his birth parents. And so when he looked into the mirror of Erised, he saw his mother and father and a long line of relations. So my friends, I would ask you this morning, if you gazed into the mirror of Erised right now, today, would you see that puzzling reflection which St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, called seeing in a glass darkly? Would it be a foggy mystery to you of who you are and what you are here to do? Would you see a reflection of hurt and long-held plans of how you can get even with the ones who you, you thought had wronged you? Would you see a reflection of lack and limitation and want? Or would you see what St. Paul calls in the very same uh, passage clearly? The truth of your heroism, the truth of your divinity, the truth of your spiritual magnificence, which he called seeing face to face. Because indeed, you are the face of God. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, page 449, and I quote, the mirror of life cannot help reflecting back to you that which you really are, unquote. The mirror of life cannot help reflecting back to you that which you really are. And so my friends, the mirror of life is not one of those fun fair, you know, horror house mirrors that show you as tall and skinny or fat and squat that distort your image. The mirror of life 
is what we call a true mirror. It reflects back to you who you really are. And I'm smiling because our founding minister at the Temple of Light, Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden, often used to say, and those of you who knew her would remember this, if you look in the mirror and your hair don't stay good, don't comb the mirror. Fix yourself. Because you see, friends, life reflects back to you who you are. So I, every day I thank God for this teaching, the science of mind and spirit, which has given us the tools to fix ourselves, to comb our own hair, not to try and fix others because we want them to be a reflection of us, but to fix ourselves so that we can be a reflection of the spirit of beauty, the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the spirit of goodness, which is God in each and every one of us. We must learn to see ourselves in the true light of how we were made, bright, joy-filled, valid, valuable, and authentic heroes of our world, for without you, the world would not be the same. Please say to someone near you, you are the face of God. You are the face of God. You know, the beautiful Jesus said in John 12, 45, and I quote, and he who sees me has already seen the one who sent me. Just think of that. He who sees you has already seen the one who sent you. You mean then that, that if people see you being irritable and, and out of sorts and unkind and grumpy, that people are saying, uh -huh. that's why I'm in the body of a church, you know. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm in a lack anything to do with, with church. You see them, them say them is Christian, or them say is, them is science of men, true students. And look at how that person is behaving. You always have to remember that you are being seen as a representative of that which sent you to earth to represent it. And that is because, friends, your consciousness creates a field of awareness. It's like a force field around you that attracts to you what you are putting out there into the universe. Are you radiating love and joy and goodness? Or are you radiating that which is not in alignment with your highest and most beautiful God self? The mid 19th century American essayist, philosopher, poet, and believe it or not, abolitionist, Ralph Waldo Emerson, put it this way, who you are speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you are saying. Who you are speaks so loudly, it's sending such a clear message to the world and to me, that no matter what you're saying, that's not what I'm hearing. I am hearing who you are because it speaks louder than words and touches me more deeply than anything you could say. I never forget Reverend Elmer on the eve of my ordination saying, John Deere, your life is your message. And people will never or seldom remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. You see, friends, it's the feeling that the universe responds to. It's the feeling that you, that you generate in people that makes the difference between whether you are a hero for God or not. And so just bear in mind that you are always radiating what you are inside. When we let the God presence shine through from us, then when we look into the mirror of life, we'll see reflected back to us 
who we truly are and can say, as Jesus the way Shoah said, when you see me, you see the one who sent me. You know, in Jamaica, sometimes when we are arguing, all the, sometimes very vociferously, and we want to be sure that people are, are, are understanding us, we say, you see me? It's an interesting phrase. Do you see me? Do you see what I am saying? Do you see who I am? Do you see what I stand for? Do you see where I'm coming from? You see me? And that is what Jesus was saying. When you see me, Anomia say, you are see who sent me. You are seeing that which created me in the image and likeness of its own beauty, its own truth, its own eternity, its own love. And the, the truth, my friends, is no matter how long you remain blind to or resistant to claiming your greatness, to claiming your spiritual magnificence, it has to come forth through you and as you. You cannot stop the evolution of your soul into greater and greater expressions of good, of glory, and of God. One of my favorite st storytellers is the late Indian Jesuit um, priest, Father Anthony de Mello. And he was a great storyteller. And he told a story which I have adapted for the Caribbean culture. The original was titled The Reluctant Oak Tree. But we don't have any oak trees in Jamaica. So I have, I have adapted it and renamed it The Reluctant Ake Tree. You want to hear my Ake Tree story? Adapted from Anthony de Mello? Once upon a time, there was a magnificent Ake Tree growing in St. William Grant Park in downtown Kingston, here in beautiful Jamaica. Its branches stretched out generously on every side so that the tree was a welcome haven for people needing a shady respite from the, the summer sun, as well as many species of birds which nested in its branches. And twice a year, from January to March, and again from June to August, the massive ackee tree shared its, its bounty of delicious fruit, which Jamaicans used to make the nation's national dish, ackee and saltfish. One day, a little black ackee seed rolled under the shrubs some distance from the mother tree, the parent tree, thereby escaping the park gardener's rake. It lay there contented. The last thing it wanted, God forbid, was to grow into a big ackee tree and have people up picking from it, and yet it had heard terrible stories of how human beings cut down trees for no reason to build big, ugly buildings, and um, of all the horrible things that can happen to full-grown, full-blown trees. Lightning can strike it, and um, all kinds of things. So it didn't want to become an ackee tree. And so it lay there, contented, and the rains came, and the sun shone, and little by little, little our ackee seed sank slowly into the soil. Eventually, water from the rain and light from the sun and warmth conspired together to transform the ackee seed into a small green shoot. One day, the shoot cautiously poked up through the shrubs. It was not happy with the new state of affairs. It had changed and become a new self against its will didn't want to go where it was going. However, the park gardener took a liking to this little fragile green sprout and started to nurture it. Each day, the gardener came by to see how his, 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 ackee, his ackee sapling was doing, and he cleared away the shrubs and the weeds so that the rays of the sun could shine directly on it. And before it knew what was happening, the shoot was on its way to becoming a sapling. <laughs> it was 
a devastating realization for the little Aki sapling. Not only was life as an Aki seed ir irretrievably lost, but now it seemed that life as a shoot was gone forever as well. This really was out of order. It decided that enough was enough. It would not grow any leaves. So see there, me now do it. <laughs> but the park gardener was nothing if not persistent and continued to care assiduously for the tender young tree. He fastened it against a stake to help it withstand any strong wind and spoke to it softly of the wonderful blessing it would be to the world. And he would say, boy, it's only a pity my wife can't eat it enough because she's allergic. But I tell you, are the nicest thing, Aki. <laughs> the young Aki tree decided that this would truly be the end of the road. It did not want any more change. Sound like some of us? <laughs> mm -hmm. With all its might, it forbade each young Aki to ripen, because the little green ones were coming out. But the gentle gardener had other plans. He continued to watch over the tree. He watered its roots when the weather was dry. He mulched the ground beneath it. And over time, the Aki's changed color to a rich ruby red. And passers-by began to look forward to more delicious Aki's. The reluctant Aki tree became a generous source of sustenance for hungry people and a home for human beings, animals, and birds. As the Aki's opened, those that weren't picked by grateful people dropped from the tree and sank into the fertile soil to begin their own life journey toward their own greatness. Yet, the Aki tree still had not come to terms with its purpose, its destiny, and its God-given lot. But something happened one August night that led to a groundbreaking change. A tropical storm wreaked havoc in Jamaica, badly damaging the huge Aki tree. And the next morning when the storm had passed, the gardener came by to check on the trees in the park. And he saw that his little Aki tree that had grown now into a sturdy um, bearer of the delicious fruit had been badly damaged. The gardener spent the entire day pruning the broken branches and trying to make the tree, to save the tree, all the while whispering encouraging words, hush, your soon, your soon sprout back, hush, no worry, God have purpose for you. And he was so tired after hours of working and chopping off, you know, lopping off branches that had been damaged, that he squatted down under the tree and he looked up into the branches to see if there was anything that he had missed. And as he looked up, Something amazing happened. The Aki tree looked down into his countenance, shining like the sun. Kindness and concern and caring and dedication radiating from the gardener's face. And his eyes, black like Aki seeds, full of love. And there was a shift in the consciousness of the Aki tree. A major shift. Because at that moment, it resigned itself to its own magnificence. Thinking to itself, if someone like a gardener, like this gardener, can care for me so deeply that he has spent the entire morning sweating in the sun to repair the damage that has been done to me, the least I could do is be the best self that I was created to be. And so, looking down into the gardener's sweat-streaked face, leaves waving gently, the leaves that were left in the breeze, even the sturdy trunk seemed to breathe a deep inhale and exhale, and the Aki tree said yes. The Aki tree said yes to life, Yes to its destiny, yes to its purpose, yes for why God had planted it where it had grown, so that God may be glorified in every branch, in every leaf, in every fruit 
that that tree bore. And so my friends, I guess my question for you this morning is, are you willing to grow under the care of your gardener so that when people see you, they see that which has tended you without any hope of thanks or reward, that which has nurtured you, that which will prune your branches if they are bruised or broken. Will you allow your life to make you the hero of the creator of your being? And if you will, would you just say yes? Yes. May not hear a word. I'm yes. not convinced. Yes. yes. Are you willing, my friends, to help nurture the growth of our spiritual community so that the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living can, like the mighty Aki tree, spread its branches far and wide, becoming a place of rest and restoration so that we the weary and the uncertain and the lost can find refuge and be fed by the truth that we offer and drink from the chalice of our love so that they will thirst no more. And if you are willing to be part of this movement called the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, I don't think of us as a church. I think of us as a movement, a movement forward, the growth of this institution so that we can feed those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And if you're willing to be part of this movement forward into greater than we have ever experienced before, say with me, yes. Yes. I'm not convinced, do you? Yes. 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 Wow. We are about to receive the strategic plan for the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and it is a plan for the way forward. And I invite every one of you to be a part of that journey. And when you read that plan, just see in its pages where you fit in and say yes. Yes to a future of a world that works for all. And you know, actually the world already works for all. It works for all according to our consciousness. So what we want to do is to up-level people's consciousness to the recognition that we are God's heroes, that we are planted here to bear spiritual fruit, to recognize our own greatness, our own divinity, and our spiritual magnificence. And if God can create an ackee tree from a little black ackee seed, just think about what God can create through you, for you, as you, in your life. So that you, like the national heroes of Jamaica, can make a difference in our country, in our communities where we live, in the world, in fact, all across the planet, so that the goodness of God may be known and experienced and felt by all. I should like to leave you with Marcus Garvey's words on the function of the human. I quote, to me a man has no master but God. Man is his, in, in his authority is a sovereign lord. As for the individual man, so of the individual race. This feeling makes man so courageous, so bold, as to make it impossible for his brother to intrude upon his rights. So few of us can understand why it what it takes to make a man the man who will never say die, 
the man who will never give up, the man who will never depend upon others to do for him what he ought to do for himself, the man who will not blame God, who will not blame nature, who will not blame fate for his condition, but the man who will go out and make conditions for himself. Oh, how disgusting life becomes when on every hand you hear people who bear your image and likeness and your resemblance telling you they cannot make it, that fate is against them, that they cannot get a chance. If 400 million Negroes can only get to know themselves, to know that in them is a sovereign power, is an authority that is absolute, then in the next 24 hours, we would have a new race. We would have a nation, an empire, resurrected not from the will of others to see us rise, but from our own determination to rise, irrespective of what others may think." Unquote. Thank you, Marcus Mazaya Garvey. Thank you, heroes and heroines, for looking into the mirror of life and seeing your purpose. Let us follow in their footsteps as we proudly say, ours, O oh Lord, a mighty nation, spreading wide from sea to sea. Ours, the capstone of creation, land of hope and liberty. Thanks for those who on the altar laid their lives at freedom's call, those of faith who did not falter, known and unknown, we praise all. Happy Heroes Day. God loves you and so do I. Namaste. Wow. Let us give Reverend John another round of applause. Yes, Jamaica for true. I'm me I'm for tell you. you. <laughs> ja made you for true. You for tell yourself. <laughs> me for tell you. Good. Ja make you for true. So Reverend John asked us, told us that life, the mirror of life, reflects back to us who we really are. But when you look in the mirror, how do you feel? Do you see the face of God? If you don't see the face of God, then remember, there is a great love caring for you, calling you to be the best that you can be. All you need to do is to say yes and let that hero in you come forth because you are the personification of the self-knowingness, the infinite self-knowingness of God. There is a hero in you. You are truly God's hero. <laughs>